Good morning, everyone, for our united service of the word. It's wonderful to have you all with us this morning, uh, and especially some faces that I see from uh, St. Botolf. So welcome to you here today. This morning, we're going to open with a prayer of preparation. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. And so we say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and it will in a song we will praise our God. We're now going to sing our first hymn. Please stand.
As we say the psalm together, I will say the odd verses, if you all can say the even verses. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the earth and the word were formed, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday, which passes like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried and weathered up. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We now hear our first reading from Deuteronomy. The first reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 34. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho, and the Lord showed him the whole land. Gilead, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah, as far as the Western Sea, the Negev and the plain, that is, the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar. The Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to Abram, to Isaac and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired, and his vigour had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab for 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him, and the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequalled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land and for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Mo Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now stand for our, oh, we're having an next reading. Lovely. <laughs> the second reading is taken from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, Seven, chapter two. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully maltreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak not to please mortals, but to please God who will test our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
And now we stand for the hidden. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, How is it then, then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer. 
nor from that day did anyone dare to, ha to ask him any more questions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We shall say the Gospel Canticle together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. All you need is love. We all know the song written by the Beatles. It's easy. All you need is love. Love, a simple four-letter word that means so much but can be so elusive. As we heard in our Gospel reading today, Jesus tells the Pharisees that the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And the second is like it, to love your neighbour as yourself. We hear the song, we know the tune, we've heard it so many times. And as we know, loving our neighbour is not always easy. It requires patience, forgiveness, understanding. Jesus spoke of compassion, mercy, justice and reconciliation. If we look round the world today, we can see just how hard it is to love each other. We can see the hurt caused by war, social injustice, poverty, ignorance and isolation. Our neighbour is not only the person living next door to us, but it's also the person halfway around the world who is suffering, someone different from a different background, someone with opposing views. Our interconnected world, loving your neighbour, trans transcends boundaries. Think about what love means to you and me. What did Jesus mean? Love has so many aspects to it. The love between men and women, the love of a parent for their child, the love of an extended family, of close and old friends, of church communities, the love for one another. God revealed the way he wanted the world and our lives to be when he sent his son Jesus to be with us, to show us what the world could be like if we loved God above all others by acknowledging the humanity in every person that we meet, by looking past our differences. When Jesus spoke to the Pharisees, he was referring to the love of God as written in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5 and is said to be an active response to a faithful of a faithful person to the love of God we tend to think of love as an intense emotion generally shared between two people but the love of the Bible is more of a passionless love more like extending the hand of loving kindness that holds all things dear that shows mercy and is generous it means to treat others as we would want to be treated ourselves a world that prides itself in showing mutual respect and dignity to one another. Loving each other should not be something we can opt out, opt out of as the mood takes us. The fact that it often takes us out of our comfort zone reminds us of our prime purpose, that, it's, that we have to help others. 
to walk in their shoes, to show empathy and compassion in all our doings. We can serve God by showing our loving kindness. We can love God through praise and worship and also by prayer for our neighbours and ourselves. Loving God should guide our actions every day. We can accept that it's hard to do, but we have to start somewhere. And I know it's easy to say, but if everyone showed loving kindness to each other, the world would be a better place. Because people would have a sense of greater self-worth, and to be loved is a wonderful thing, as we all know. God's greatest gift to the world is love, and that love begins with us and brings, brings hope to the world for the future. As I said at the beginning, all we need is love. Amen. Let us stand and declare our faith in God together. And so we say together, we believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standard for our next hymn.
muted for our intercessions. Lord, let us pray. Mighty God, as we are gathered together here today in hope and in faith, we ask you to minister to our needs. Send the Holy Spirit to fill the hearts of your faithful people. Faithful God, we ask you to make the doors of your churches at Bulkington and Burton Hastings wide enough to receive all who need human love and fellowship and the care of your Heavenly Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for our church leaders and for all our clergy and lay readers, especially Charles, Emma, Rob, and Sue, that they will be guided in their ministry and by the influence of the Holy Spirit, and that the church, in the power of the Spirit, may make the gospel understandable to all people. We pray especially at this time for Emma, Charles, and Rowan as the welcome baby Elspeth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for our community, those who live and work in St. James Gardens, Stafford Close, Staples Close, and Tamar Road. For all the students and staff at St. James Church of England Academy and Arden Forest School, and all who are enjoying a well-earned half-term break. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for our very troubled world, especially the people suffering as a result of the war in Israel and Ukraine. Give wisdom to all world leaders to seek some way out of this conflict. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, friend of those in need, your son Jesus can free us from our burdens and heal our bodies and spirits. We pray for those still burdened, those seeking healing, those in need within the church and the world. In our community, the following have asked for our prayers. Paul Towers, Josie Bayliss, June Quinney, Maggie Harris, Sheila Pike, Carol Cross, Kerry, Dorothy Thomas, Margaret Powney, Holly and Matt, Gareth and Liz Jones. And we pray too for all those who are named on the prayer tree. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, as we approach All Souls Day on the 2nd of November, we remember and honour all those who have departed this life, those whom we love and no longer see. In our community this week, we commend into your hands Sandra Lenton, Margaret Wikes, and Judy Sherratt. You gave them breath and loved them through their journey of life. Receive them now at the end of that journey into your eternal presence, and may their souls rest in everlasting peace. Father God, be with those who mourn and those whose anniversary occurs at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, as we go out into the world to start another week, we pray that we may reflect your love in our families, our church and our community, so that the world can witness that we are followers of Christ and draw others into his loving care. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for, the, for the sake of your Son, Son our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. God, the giver of life, whose Holy Spirit dwells up within your church, by the Spirit's gifts equip us to live the gospel of Christ and make us eager to do your will, that we may share with the whole creation the joys of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The notices this week are actually on the notice sheet. We've got it before the service this time. Um, everything is on there that we, that it, you know, that we need to know. Is there anybody else who's got Rachel? Okay, thank you. No other notices. Okay. Please stand for our final hymn.
we end today's service with the peace. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. Okay, go. Let's, should we go?